you said in your form, my biggest frustration on the planet are humans, and yet they're my favorite thing to photograph. Mm-hmm. So they're your human beings, portrait, model, photography. Yeah. That's like your favorite form of, mm-hmm. of photos. Um, I, I personally like your work and um, yeah, the modeling photography. Thank you. And I, when I, I'm not nearly as experienced with photography as you are, but I personally also like the modeling shoots the most. Um, I like doing weddings too, but Mm -hmm. um, the model shoots are really fun. I really like that one-on-one collaboration with like a a subject and um, you know, through my various forms of creative outlets i feel like i <clears throat> often have uh different levels of like a thing that pops in the mind's eye that i try to achieve and some things i approach with like a very to the t aim mm-hmm. for execution to make it as much like it is in the mind's eye as possible and then on the other end of that there's like just this general broad abstract idea or feeling and then i just chase that and see what happens mm-hmm. with the modeling shoot it's like well, I just want a product at the end of this, and this is the person I want to work with. And I want to, through the socializing and through like exchanging of ideas or throwing ideas out there and seeing which one excites us and is simultaneously viable, seeing what comes. Yeah. There's, I think it's like a, ra- a much more radical form of openness. That's at least how like I like to approach it. But I wanted to hear your thoughts about what it is that attracts you about that particular form of photography and um, why you love it so much that's a great question i think i think part of the frustrations that i have with people is also what creates the depth of like my love for the work Mm. i think like the reason that i care so much about humans and these problems is because i'm able to be like so worked up when i see someone that's like frustrating with their views about like the environment or Mm -hmm. selfishness but while humans carry that laterally on the other side they also carry like the greatest capacity for um the opposite so i think i think the inherent complexity of everything that a human can be like with their frustrations and their greatness is everything that you are and like the so like everything that you are and that a human could be is like everything that's possible in the world and so photographing them you inadvertently are capturing that complexity as well um but i do i do sincerely think that there is like a chemistry that happens when you photograph a person that um, the combined creative energy is like Mm -hmm. what makes a product that you couldn't have made on your own otherwise. Um, And so like, I think my best shoots have been with people that I like am very attached to Mm -hmm. or like we share a certain uh, relationship, but there's also like extreme things I find out about myself um, because I I get really nervous shooting people, Mm -hmm. but I still like force myself to do it time and time again. Um, but I think it's the extremes of going to that, like that low place and then that high place as a byproduct and figuring out yourself in between, Yeah, you know, like in the past, I like, I like on the internet to advertise myself as someone that's like good with people and confident and stuff like that. And it like works for that. And then like, I have to like kind of show up and do that mm-hmm. when it's very hard for me. Yeah. It's almost like a character. It's a character. Yeah. And it's very hard for me to do that with people, which is like the stuff I'm really passionate about, the stuff that I really like love to make. Um, I have to like sit down and have a conversation with the person and like understand their mind a little bit. Like I kind of want us to be unified in like the visuals because it starts with me visualizing it and it never ends up there. And I'll have like a clear thing that turns into like you said, a feeling Mm -hmm. and then it's matched between two people because I hate modeling. Like, so I very much um, respect it. Mm. And I got into it as a byproduct of trying to understand more of like what the models were feeling. And I see how like what an experience it is on a psychological level to like be unaware of how you're being perceived from this like two dimensional plane and then like still working within it, like with a conductor. Cause I think a lot of the times for me, at least why I've like favored visual elements is because I can't say what I want to show and I could sit here all day and maybe, maybe get you that message, but there's so many factors. Like, do I feel awkward? Am I like, am I worried about how you see me? Just like all these different Mm -hmm. social variables. Um, so like me holding a camera, I have a version of a story 
and then the model has a version of a story and then like holding the camera just gives you an excuse to to tell that story between two people i think yeah that that element of holding the camera gives you an excuse really i think this is almost like an embarrassing share about nice. i think my my attraction to like modeling photography is like it you know the the way that we like our attention gravitates towards beauty like not just like the beauty of a sunset or like you know a landscape or something but like beauty in human beings you know whether that is a physical beauty or just like your emotional attachment to someone that you know mm -hmm. it's like you can have that i feel like i'm someone that has that for for people um and the camera is almost an excuse to get around them and like spend time with them and get to know yeah. them and capture their beauty and like turn it turn transmute it into art that can yeah. be shared that they can appreciate you yourself can appreciate and more people can can appreciate because i feel like a lot of times without that i wouldn't be allowed 10 minutes i would have no other excuse yeah. to have even 10 minutes to be around this person and get to know them and so, so um yeah like you wouldn't walk up to them in the street you want to ask them questions that you're wondering. You wouldn't know what it's like to have that exchange. Yeah. Well, it's, it's like, I might walk up to them in the street, but I'm not going to get a, yes, I'm down to hang out with you under any other pretense other than, can I take some pictures of you? Yeah. You know? And so that, um, using it as an excuse for bonding, it's like, it's a, you know, to, and to me, I feel that, that's really secondary. It's a secondary motivator that I think generates an element of that nervousness that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Like it raises the stakes and makes you a little more invested in putting your attention to the detail and really not just trying to capture the beauty of the subject, but also pair them with a, a, a relatively beautiful background or composition of colors and mm -hmm. shapes um, and, you know, angles and lighting and that kind of thing. But um, it also, yeah, it just makes you care more when you, you know, because otherwise it, you photograph something or someone you don't <laughs> give so much of a shit about. You might not yeah. put that kind of attention. You have to have something on the line. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. You need to raise your, your heart rate a little bit. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I've done some pretty wild things with art in the recent years that have raised the stakes. And they've been <laughs> quite a, a plethora of experiments that, you know, in hindsight, maybe weren't smart ideas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but... Um, even, even some of the not smart ideas, there's an appreciation to be had for them of like, damn, I'm glad I'm not doing that currently, Yeah, but I'm glad that I have that memory and that experience. I think photography is a fascinating time capsule for more than like the person that you're taking a picture of, but it's also like a portrayal of like how you were viewing the world and like what mattered to you. Like even Annie Leibovitz, I forget who she photographed, but she took the person out into like Times Square and he was completely nude and like painted mm. all over and they just hopped out and like, took the photo. And like that's Annie Leibovitz, like the most yeah. successful photographer in the world. And you know, it's not like an amazing photo, right? It's not her typical work where it's right. polished, but it is a photo that captures something and it tells it really well. And it's like a time capsule. And I think that's why I think photography is important because of stuff like that. Um, and like, I think, I think it exists the soul of somebody more than like the technical aspect matters a lot of the times. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Cause like you can hit your checklist and take a good photo every time. That's what like real estate technically tries to do. But like there are photos that are technically wrong where like the rule of thirds is broken or feet are cut off. But yeah. like the subject matter is what makes like the photo in like you still had to be there with the intention to press the camera to view that moment. Yes. Yeah. So another thing you said here that I liked, I resonated with, um, I have an obsessive personality and tend to dive into things head first. Brother, you're preaching to the choir. <laughs> yeah. I actually feel like we're mildly similar. Uh, but yeah, I have to like kill anything that I love basically. Mm. But I, I don't like run from it so much anymore. I'm like here to experience my fiery season of passion. Yeah. Can you elaborate on, you have to kill anything you love. Ah, uh, I think I get it, but I'd love to hear your words. Yeah. Just like if I'm into something, I don't have a middle ground. I, um, it's brought me to like great heights and great lows because, um, like, let me think of an example for like, even when I was a kid, 
I would want to like rewatch, let's say Ferris Bueller for mm-hmm. the seventh thousandth time because of like these attachments that I have to, it, instead of discovering something new. That's like a very microscopic view. Cause that's just like a movie, but I've been that way with like anything that like I chose to pursue because I want to experience it. I think this is in self-reflection. I think I want to experience like the extent of humanity, kind of like what I think you're doing with your photos. It's like mm. you said, you've been pushing it and like some of the things in retrospect, you're like, I don't know if I would have done that, but if you didn't do it, then you wouldn't have known. Yeah. I don't know if I mean that so much about my photos. Um, yeah. I mean the experience yeah. of it all, like trying to feel um, the excitement in yes. your like human system or whatever. Um, but like if you didn't, experience those things then you wouldn't know what like that extent of that particular human experience was yeah um but i don't know like it's not like i it's not like i am obsessive with things because i wake up and i think it's the right thing of do right thing to do i'm just justifying behavior that already exists in me yeah (laughs) right right now i think the obsessiveness is a a a double-edged sword like the way i see it is I feel like when it's in regard to creativity and like output, it's a really useful thing Mm -hmm. because it's like you latch on to a project and you do not let it go until it's done. You just can't. Yeah. And, um, but then I think often the negative edge of that sword is that it translates to your relationships with people. And I have found myself just absolutely, um, being obsessed with like romantically Mm -hmm. that and it's it's so parallel to how i am about the creative things and i'm like aware of it at this point for the longest time i wasn't like it it was a thing i had to piece together like oh that makes sense Mm -hmm. (laughs) later but um you know you you often like this whole middle ground thing most people would prefer a middle ground Mm -hmm. most people would prefer a little bit at a time yeah and to not like move quickly (laughs) <laughs> but when you just are a fiery explosion of passion immediately yeah, and you're unrelenting with it, it's a really repulsive thing for most people. I, I get think that. In that. Especially in that romantic context. It's rare to have people that respond to it and appreciate it and like it. And um, it's one of those things. It's like I'm even with that awareness, it feels wrong and sickening to compromise it and mask it. To, yeah. I mean, I relate to that because I think I'm the same way. Yeah. Like I would rather burn out a romantic relationship as fast as possible to like know what it was like Mm -hmm. than than to have like dragged it on for years. Like I want to know what it's like immediately. Yeah. So I think I'm like you in that manner. But I also, once again, do not qualify myself as somebody that's like doing the right actions. So like I'm not, I'm not defending it. Right. Yeah. Right. No, same, same thing. I, I almost feel like, um, at least in my case, I feel like it's something as a, as a result of being fucked up in some, some yeah. way that um, may be uh, a psychological issue that is a result of something that happened so early in childhood that it's just not repairable. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, I'm taking this to the grave. Yeah. Yeah. 